Manchester United return to under-18's Premier League action for just the third time this season. They take on a Stoke City side who, like United, have had a mixed start to the season with a mixture of both wins and losses in their opening games. Now, Travis Binion names four changes from the team that took on Liverpool, which sees Nolan, Jackson, Morehouse and Mather make way for Lawrence, Parker, Berry and 14-year-old Ibrahimov. After a slow start to the game from both sides, the first attempt on target came in the 15th minute after Ibrahimov kept the ball alive, but Williams couldn't make the most of his header. Five minutes later, the second effort on target, this time Manny Norkit with another headed effort that didn't really trouble the keeper. As we approached the half an hour mark, Stoke City, against the run of play, opened up the United defence, but Matthew Lesueno couldn't make the most of the opportunity. Half time beckoned as Stoke City almost took the lead after a bit of commotion in the box led to Max Asplin hitting the post with his effort. Seconds later, United launched a counter-attack, but Norkit didn't get the connection he would have wanted. As the clock ticked on to 45 minutes, Adam Berry had a chance to give United the lead heading into the break, but his free kick was just over the target. Five minutes into the second half and Stoke will wonder how they weren't in front. The ball cut back to what looked like an open goal, but United managed to regain possession and keep the score level. Both teams continue to push, but without creating too many opportunities. Stoke came close, but the shot was just wide of the target. United stepped it up with attacks of their own as a corner was whipped into the back post where Harrison Parker was waiting. A triple substitution was made inside the second half to inject some energy into the game, which also gifted another debut to Fitzgerald, who replaced Williams. And it was almost an instant impact for Ethan Wheatley. Seconds after coming on, he almost opened the scoring with a left-footed strike across the face of goal. United really stepped up the pressure and it was Sam Murray who controlled the ball well and Wheatley this time had his shot blocked. Adam Berry had the opportunity from a set piece once again, this time getting much closer. In the end, it was a long ball hoofed down the pitch that opened the scoring. Luscueno latched onto it and managed to squeeze the ball past the advancing Worcester. Without a doubt, United's best chance of the game came on 70 minutes. A beautiful outside of the football from Berry was clipped into Norkit, who took it around the keeper, but it couldn't get it round the post. It was Berry again just five minutes later, picking the ball up in a similar position and this time trying his luck. United continued to search for the equaliser as Manny Norkit picked up the ball in midfield but had his cross blocked. The resulting corner promised chances but the fall ended in the keeper's hands. After catching United in possession, Tom Curley found himself driving at the United goal and driving his shot wide of the post. Deep into injury time, United had one last chance as Worcester launched the ball into the box, but unfortunately the young Reds couldn't make the most of the opportunity. Full time here in Clayton Wood, Stoke City 1, Manchester United 0. Travis, it seemed to be a game of few chances for either side, but when a chance came it seemed to be even more important to take it. How would you analyse that one? Yeah, no, listen, I think, I think you're right. Um... We've got to create more opportunities. We had a few moments second half. We had complete dominance in, in the first half for, for a good chunk of the game, but don't turn it into chances. Um, so, yeah, we, we've, got, we've got a lot of work to do, um, probably across the phase with types of goals we score, types of opportunities we create. So it's no good having the ball unless you're going to uh, ask real questions of the opposition and, and, uh, and score goals and create goals. And we haven't done that today. Um, and they've won the game on a, on a mistake, uh, but there was a mistake just before that as well when when I think it got cleared off the line. So we can't say we didn't we didn't have our warnings. Um, so yeah, listen, they're they're buzzing. They've won the game, um, but we can't say we, we've done enough to to stop them winning the game or, or win it ourselves. So yeah, disappointing really. Four substitutions in that second half was that just to inject a bit of energy into the game and try and get it go your way? Um, 
Yes, but they were always planned. Um, obviously, the boys played overnight against City, and uh, it was obviously it's a tough game, and a lot of them will be feeling that. So yeah, the young the younger boys came off the pitch in general, um, and yeah, listen, they they were like for like changes. We, we changed the shape slightly. I think we asked more questions of them with that shape, but ultimately we came up short in the, in those key moments. It's still positives to take. Obviously, Amir getting 90 minutes. He, he great performance from him. Then Fitzgerald also came on for his first time on the 18s. Yeah, listen, they're, they're good players. So we need to we need to make sure it doesn't matter what their age is. They need to play. They need to get opportunities uh, in the older age groups. So yeah, I thought Amir was was very good. Um, and yeah, obviously Harrison Parker played as well. And yeah, listen, it's going to be a season of making sure we, we provide enough opportunities for those younger players while still improving the, the whole group individually. So, yeah, listen, lots to do. Um, just disappointed that, obviously, off the back of Villa, where we didn't score and we've not scored again today. Um, and really, we should be coming away with goals in both games and, and that's an ongoing thing at the minute. So, got a lot of work to do. So, just one of those days here in Stoke today. A game, a few chances. It really felt like whoever was going to get that first goal was going to take away all three points. And unfortunately for our young Reds, they were on the wrong side of the result today. But they've got two weeks to go away, reflect, relax, and we'll be back after the international break.